Hello, and welcome to Neighborhood House. My name is Miss Amelia. I'm a teacher here at Neighborhood House in Milwaukee. And as you can see, I'm wearing a mask on my face. This mask allows me to keep my germs to myself, but I'm gonna take it off so you can hear what I'm saying. And I'm just gonna lay it to the side. The mask was made by Miss Rosa. So I like that mask. I have been a teacher here at Neighborhood House for 19 years. I teach three and four year olds. So hopefully you guys are watching, we can do this together. On Fridays, we usually do a cooking or a science project together. Today, we're going to do another recipe together. This recipe that we're going to do today is a Play-Doh recipe. It was handed down to me by Teacher Lisa and Teacher Marilyn. So let's go through all of our ingredients and the tools that we're gonna use for this Play-Doh recipe that we're gonna to make together today. We have our cream of tartar. We have our flour. We have our salt. We have our water. We have our oil. We also have different measuring tools that we're using. This is going to be a quarter cup of cream of tartar. These are our two cups of flour. This is our half cup of salt. I'm gonna use two cups for my water. And I'm gonna use two tablespoons, one tablespoon actually, this size for our oil, we need two. And then we also have our crock pot, we have our spatula for mixing, we have our bowl, and we also have food coloring. Today I'm gonna to use green. So you guys can choose any color that you would like. We are in the season of spring, so this way you can choose pink or yellow or anything that you want, but sorry, I'm, I'm using green. You can choose any color you want. So I'm gonna start by using my, putting in my dry ingredients first. So first I'm gonna start with a quarter cup of cream of tartar. Make sure you have a quarter cup of cream of tartar too, because we are making this together. So you wanna pour that into your bowl. Next, we're gonna move on to the flour. Remember, we're putting in two cups of flour, so make sure you have two cups of flour. This is one. And this is two. So make sure you have your two cups of flour. The last dry ingredient that we're going to add is our half cup of salt. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. See how they're all white and it's hard for you to tell them apart, but they're all, those are our three dry ingredients that we're gonna have in there. The next ingredient we're gonna add is our wet ingredients. So now we're gonna start with two cups of water. I know I only have one cup, but you guys are doing the same thing so because we're doing this all together. So you wanna pour that in, so make sure you're pouring your water in. So we're gonna pour it in, that's one. Then we're gonna add in the oil. So we need two tablespoons of oil. So that's one, two. Next, we're going to add in the green food coloring. You can make it like a lighter green if you want, or a darker green, it all depends on, or you can make it any other color you want. This is what the ingredients look like before I mix them together. You're going to be doing the same thing at home. See if you're able to make, to, to see, if, see if you're able to notice a difference once you start mixing all those ingredients together. Because now I'm gonna to begin to mix my ingredients together. So when you're mixing, you wanna make sure that one hand is holding the bowl while the other hand is using your mixing tool. 
You can use a spoon if you want. You can use a spatula. I'm using a spatula today. We're gonna play a little bit. We're gonna make these together. Let me show you what it looks like now. See the difference? Hopefully yours looks like that too. You wanna make sure you get out all the clumps. So if you are gonna stir quickly, make sure you have a strong arm. And your parents can help you too. Hold on to that bowl. You want to continuously mix. Make sure you get out all the lumps. You want to mix in those ingredients together very well because that's how you want your plate to cook. If you don't do the step now, it's going to be lumpy. See the difference? Okay, so now that that's all mixed together, make sure your ingredients are really mixed. Now, I'm going to turn on the crock pot. This is where the parents come in because you don't want to mess with anything that is hot. I'm going to put mine at 200. Just put yours at 200 as well. You want to put it where it's simmering um, so that it's not going to bake or cook or burn. Um, once my pan begins to get hotter, then I know that I'm able to add in my ingredients. Make sure yours, make sure your parents are present so they're able to help you in this process. You always want to make sure that you're not handling anything that can burn you. Safety is very important. So this is what my ingredients look like. Hopefully your ingredients look like that too. So now let's pour it into the pan. I'm going to move this over a little bit. This crock pot has, has a history to it all by itself. This crock pot belonged to teacher Lisa. And you might be able to hear some of the sizzling as you add your Play-Doh ingredients into your pan, which is good. Because this Play-Doh is not edible. It means you cannot eat it. This is the Play-Doh that you want to play with with your hand. I'm scraping my bowl to get out as many and as much as the Play-Doh ingredients as I can. So now you want to continuously mix. You may have to lower your temperature down because you don't want the Play-Doh to burn. You want your ingredients to mix. You still want to keep everything together. As your Play-Doh cooks, because what you're looking for is for your ingredients to begin to clump together. And what I mean by clump together, they stick together. So that's how you know that your Play-Doh ingredients are cooking correctly. So I'm mixing all my ingredients still together as it's cooking. If your Play-Doh comes up on the sides, use your spoon to push it back down, to continuously mix it in. Cause you wanna get that scrape. You wanna scrape the sides. You wanna scrape the bottom because this is something that you're cooking. Again, this is not edible. This is only to play with your hands. So I'm mixing all ingredients together. Make sure you're mixing your ingredients together at home. And if you like this recipe, you can continuously make it at home with your family. It could be another project that you do together on a rainy day, a snowy day, or during these days that we're going through right now. As I make this recipe, I'm thinking about my penguins and I'm making this Play-Doh for them. And as I, as I mix, I know how the kids uh, love the part that will be coming next. You guys might like this part too. Because as your Play-Doh ingredients begin to mix together, 
and do something called pounding the feet out, where you're going to knead the potato like bread. Not knead as though you knead someone, but knead as though you're going to just put some muscle into it. Now my potato recipe is done. So I'm going to pour it out of the crock pot. Turn the crock pot off. Then, make sure I don't put any plate on my nose. Then, you touch the plate, it was hot. So make sure you have someone there. If it's too hot for you to touch, make sure someone else has hot hands if you can't touch it when it's at this, at this point. At this time, you want to begin to knead. You want to punch the plate down with your fist. This is good sensory. It's good for you to be able to just mix in those ingredients and at the same time relieve stress too. During these times, you want to do projects together. And this is one of those projects that you can do at home, with your family, and with your friends. So now that my Play-Doh is all kneaded together, it's done. We have made a simple Play-Doh recipe together. I hope you will continuously make this Play-Doh. When you are finished with this Play-Doh, you want to store it in a container. This a container will keep your Play-Doh well for four months. And you can make little scoffs with it. You can use popsicle sticks. You can use cookie cutters and make different designs. Or you can just squeeze it. Thank you for joining me today. I'm glad that I had a chance to share this recipe and for us to do this recipe together. I will see you later.